Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Luke chapter 17 verse 12, James chapter 3 verse 17, and John chapter 2 verse 6. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Lord God for this word. Thank you for your holiness. Thank you for helping us to see the potential. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Luke chapter 17, verse 12. And as he entered a village, he was met by 10 lepers who stood at a distance. All right, and so this is Christ when he is coming through the gate um, of this village, and he is met by people who want to be healed, right? Um and he is normally lepers have to stand very at a very far distance and yell out unclean and and do things to let everyone around them know that they are unclean and contagious um leprosy was very contagious and so it says as he entered a village he was met by 10 lepers who stood at a distance. All right. And so we know Christ, he he is so loving and so kind. He he doesn't um run away from this. I actually was reading um something about lepers. Um and it was basically a a, a period piece where it was saying that, you know, people would throw stones at people who had leprosy, like to keep them away from them, like to stay as far away from them as possible. If they came near them, they would start throwing stones at them. And so um here in James chapter 3 verse 17 this is the second verse that the Lord gave me but the wisdom from above is first pure then peaceable gentle open to reason full of mercy and good fruits impartial and sincere and we know that Christ um embodied the wisdom from above, right? He was the word made flesh. So therefore wisdom, he was, um, he, that wisdom was a part of him. He walked out that wisdom every single day. He bore the fruit of the spirit. And so it says, um, the, but the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable. So pure meaning it is undefiled. There is nothing about it that is that is unclean, right? It says then peaceable. So it, it, it makes peace. It is a peace loving um, wisdom from above. And then it says gentle, open to reason, meaning that it is not going to be rough. It's not going to be overbearing, right? Um, it is open to reason, meaning that it it doesn't boast and, and act prideful and not hear others out, right? And so it says full of mercy. So having mercy on someone, um, not giving them what they deserve, but giving them um, love, right? And so, and it says, and good fruit, impartial and sincere, good fruits. We know the fruits of the spirit um, are a part of that impartial and sincere. That impartial is the one that, um, stands out to me the most because we're talking about lepers right so if there is any partiality to be had people are going to be partial towards people who don't have leprosy right they're going to be um be preferring to stay away from people like that and so it says and sincere and so um meaning genuine in nature, um, real, right? And so Christ embodied those things. He was real. He was sincere. He was pure. He was peaceable. He was gentle. He was open to reason. He was full of mercy and good fruit. He was impartial and he was sincere. And so, you know, when these men came, his automatic reaction was not to throw stones at them. His automatic reaction was to heal them, right? His automatic reaction was to tell them what to do, right? Because he's loving, he's kind, he's gentle. He he cares about what they were going through, amen? 
All right. And so the third verse that the Lord gave me was John chapter two, verse six. Now there were six stone water jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. And so um, the thing that the Lord was showing me is that we, we can't be impartial right we can't be i mean we can't be partial towards people we can't show partiality um in in the things of god right because the thing is we all started somewhere we all started at a point of that you know most believers would look at it and say uh you know like that sin, right? But the thing is, it's all sin. Anything that falls less than perfection is sin. If you break one law, you are a lawbreaker, right? So we don't need to be um, partial towards anyone. We don't need to to say, hey, you know, you look better than that person, right? As far as on the scale of sin, right? We, we shouldn't be the judge. We don't have a heaven or a hell to put anybody in. So um, if there is any mercy to be had, we need to be having mercy because we want mercy to be shown to us. And so... Jesus was compassionate toward these lepers. He helped them. He sent them um, to where they could be cleansed and healed and and walk out that healing that he had told them um, to do, right? And so it says, now there were six stone water jars. And the thing that he was showing me about these water jars at this um, wedding um, that was going to be turned to wine is that, you know, you have to see past what you see right now. That's what partiality is doing. Partiality is judging the vessel now, right? If jo- if God would have, if Christ would have judged these vessels just the way they were, he would have said it's impossible, right? He would have said, you know, no, I'm not going to use purification um, vessels for wine, right? I'm not going to, why? Because number one, purification vessels, you would think that's for purity, that's for holiness, that's for goodness, but you have someone who is Lord over the Sabbath, Lord over all, right, here, who can who can be the judge, who can say, yes, I'm going to give this one a pass, yes, I'm going to go ahead and do this, right? So um, we have to stop looking at what in front of us and we have to look to what it could be we have to stop looking at what the the vessel's use is now and we have to look forward to the potential use in the future right the potential gain in the future these vessels these people that many are judging are our potential vessels for christ right? They are vessels who could win more souls. They are vessels who are, who have important purpose, right? And you can't just look at the outside of the vessel and say, hey, we're going to pass, right? No, we have to be used by God. We have to allow God to um, have space to tell us that, yes, you can, you can do this. You can, you can go over here and speak to this person. You can go over here and I want you to minister this word. I want you to give this person some money. I want you to give this person a hug. I want you to speak this or do that, right? You have to look past what the vessel looks like now. Because if Christ didn't look past what your vessel looked like, then you would still be unsaved right? Because it's the Lord who draws us. So if Christ had looked at you as only that clubbing person or that that person who who um, loved to lie or that person who was not a hard worker and was slothful or that person who had so much pride, 
right? If he would have looked at the vessel the way it was, then he would have never been able to um, see the fruition of what you are today. He would have never been able to um, perform great miracles through you. He would have never been able to cause other people to see your life and give glory to God, right? Because all things are working together for your good and, and God wants you to be used by him, right? So make sure that you are not just judging vessels by the way that they use, they, the way that they are right now. You're not judging the vessel by its current use, right? Judge the vessel the way the Holy Spirit is telling you to judge the vessel. Why? Because nothing can grow if we don't have faith right? That's what faith is. Faith is a substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen, right? We didn't see the wine in those stone water jars, right? But God saw the potential and God saw so much farther beyond the potential than we could even imagine, right? Because Christ knew the end from the beginning, right? He knew that this miracle was going to be a miracle that is discussed right now today as we sit here, right? So he he's looking far beyond the current use, right? He's looking far beyond these water purification vessels, right? He, he is looking towards the wine that is going to come out of this, the miracle that is going to come out of this, the people whispering and knowing that this is not regular wine, right? This wine is from above. He, he's, he's looking around and he's thinking about the fact that people are going to get saved and that there are going to be people over 2,000 years talking about this miracle. Christ sees your potential. He sees future potential in everything, right? He knows the end from the beginning. Don't judge a vessel by its use, by its current use. Judge the vessel based on your faith, right? Based on your ability to trust God that it has a greater purpose. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for showing us that we don't need to be partial towards people or things or vessels. Lord God, help us to see the best use of the vessel. Help us to see future potential and not just current use. Lord God, we love you. We praise you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, um, if there is anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you have prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he is going to show you the way and he's going to bless your path. Amen. One of the best ways to learn the voice of the Holy Spirit is to sit down, read your word, chew on your word, and talk to him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So begin to seek his face today while he may be found. Also, um, one of the things that Christ wanted us to do was to not forsake the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out. Um, Find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God, as well as go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Um, and then also um, 
go and, and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.